I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we are talking to author Pura Regalado about her inspiring work called The Second Coming of Jesus. It is a autobiography, and it tells her story from demonic possession to witnessing the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our thanks today to the marketing team at Sweet Spire Literature Management for helping us put author Pura Regalado in the spotlight. Pura, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. I'm very happy to be here with you. We're delighted. Tell the folks at home a little bit about your book, what it is all about. The Second Coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is such a unbelievable, phenomenal event, but you are his witness, you say. Tell us about that. I didn't expect this to be ha to happen to my life. It happened. And... Uh, I, Jesus made me aware that I am the fulfillment of all his prophecies of the sign of God. And uh, he, I, I came to the awareness of this miraculously. The Bible opened by itself because I'm not really a Bible reader. I was brought up in the Philippines as a Catholic. And at that time, the Catholic hierarchy uh, did not encourage reading the Bible without uh, clergy supervision. They were they want to make sure that there will be no misinterpretations. So the only part of the Bible that I know is what I hear in mass when you know read during the. So I'm not I don't know the Bible, but then something happened, and uh, I if this miraculous really i know it's hard to believe the bible opened exactly where i i would i'm supposed to read it and, and the text floated out and was magnified a hundredfold and and those the the signs from god uh were the ones of those that floated out and uh, one of them is that the only sign that shall be given in a um, evil and adulterous generation is the sign of Jonah. And suddenly I realized that my experience of an attempted evil devil possession in 1975 was my sign of Jonah. And it, I was tormented for three months. I have a full recount of my, my experience in My my uh, earlier book, my, my my name, Pura Regalado in English, and, uh, and and I didn't realize that that was my sign of Jonah until the Bible was opening and then this text was floating out and telling me that that was my sign of Jonah. And then it says that for she shall come from an uttermost part of the earth and shall condemn them. I the Philippines where I was born. It's an anonymous place where Jesus walked on earth. And I was sent by God to condemn all false beliefs, false prophets, and false gods that are the root cause of conflicts, hatred, and wars on earth today in our age of information. And then another the text floated out, and it says, you will come by one bearing a pitcher of water. Enter the house, he enters sin. And I am an Aquarian, the water bearer. And Jesus bade you to believe me. Wow, and then the, uh, the, um, on the, the revelation, when uh, Jesus, uh, in the letters of the Jesus of the seven churches, uh, it says there, uh, I think it was the church of Pergamos. And then it says, the one who overcomes shall be given a white stone with a new name. I have that white stone. And it is a, a small, I, I posted the picture of this white stone on the internet on my Facebook pages. And it, it has, I didn't, I, I didn't actually, I picked up the stone 
to use it as a pumice stone, you know, to defoliate my feet when I'm taking a bath. It was after a while I noticed the letters and it has the letters S P A. And I, it, it, God is communicating to me telepathically, supreme power above. And so, that, and, and so these are the signs that, that Jesus told me that I have fulfilled. Oh, another thing which I didn't mention in my book. When I was going through my sign of Jonah ordeal, I used the Bible as a, a weapon against Satan. And I was reading it aloud. I was reading the, the Revelation. For some reason, I opened to the Revelation, and I was reading the Revelation aloud. And the, it, that's, when, uh, that's when the seven churches was... Uh, revealed to me which they are and um, one of them is that says you have left your first love and I saw the images of the Protestant church and their first love is the search for truth and they left their search for truth and they settled with salvation by faith alone and then they are preaching that you don't have to be perfect because the blood of Jesus saved you already and Jesus told me that is blasphemy because he then wrote his, his words, you need to be perfect as God in heaven in perfect came out of the Bible. And, and then uh, the church, the, the, the church in Laodicea, I was seeing images of the Buddhist temples. So the church in Laodicea, is, it says, you're neither hot nor cold. And then it was because they are neither hot nor cold in disseminating the truth about reincarnation. And then the words of Jesus came out, you need to be born again to reach the kingdom of heaven. Also, when he was talking about John, he said, that John was Elijah who has come back, clearly implying reincarnation. So the Romans who propagated Christianity didn't believe in reincarnation. So they interpret they interpreted the, the words of Jesus to be born again as to convert. Jesus didn't say convert. He said born again. So and, and clearly God was really telepathically telling me that we are born again, if we are worthy of life. And uh, in, in this, in my God experiences, I, I was shown when the, the, the page in the Bible, the text in the Bible said that the, the unredeemable evil soul is cast to the lake of fire. I saw images that, that the lake of fire is the magma or the, that comes out of the volcanic eruption. And, and, and uh, you know, I, I, to my understanding, the residual energy of the soul of, a, um, of an unredeemable soul turns into the Higgs boson particle that is responsible for the formation of physical matter. And it happens in the magma chamber that oozes out as lava which is called the lake of fire in the Bible. And then, and then also I, I saw that why the body of Jesus disappeared. It's, I saw every atom in his body turning into pure energy. And some Christian calls it rupture. So Jesus ruptured to be one with God in eternal life. And the, uh, I saw in the visions that was given to me that the process of matter converting into pure energy generated the heat that burnt his image on his shroud. That's why the shroud is in the negative because the fabric closest his skin burnt the most, so it is the darkest. See, this shroud had undergone severe scrutiny and um, experts concluded that there are no coloring pigments 
to reduce the image. The image was burned into the fabric, which agreed with the vision that I saw. And at the same time, it was God was telling me that that is the ultimate purpose of our lives, to reach the perfection of Jesus, to rupture body and soul, to be one with God in eternal life. So we, uh, for me, I would say that we intelligent beings are the larva of God. Because also I saw images that tell, told me that as intelligent beings from all over our universe turn into pure energy to be one with God, so that our universe expands. Science has no explanation for the continuous expansion of our universe. And uh, in, in my God experience, I was, I was made to understand that Satan is a natural force in our universe that aim to turn energy into physical matter. That's why he wants every e intelligent being to be evil because evilness kills the soul to become the Higgs boson particle that produce, that uh, create physical matter. So we have only these choices. Be good, aim for perfection, aim to reach the perfection of Jesus, to rupture body and soul, to be one with God in eternal life, or be evil and you die. That's the second death in the mentioned in the Bible is the death of the soul to become the Higgs boson particle that is become the dirt of the earth eventually because magma cools down to become rock and the rock erodes to dust, the dirt of the earth. And, you know, lately, not too long ago, I saw a program on television about Nostradamus and Nostradamus it was about the visions that Nostradamus saw about the end of our world and it to me it looked like the eruption of the super volcano in Yellowstone that was the image that they were showing on tv that was the vision of Nostradamus and God had shown me that uh, Mount Kilauea erupted in 1983, and then it continued to spew out lava for more than two decades. And in the visions that I saw, there were the evil souls that were cast to the lake of fire. See, these evil souls had, in, had increased the real state of Hawaii. <laughs> and, and then if we continue our decad fall to decadence, our, our humanity is really, they, I don't know why nobody is aware that we are really on our downward fall to decadence. It, more, more evil soul will be cast like a fire and that will make the Yellowstone volcano to erupt. We can prevent this. Uh, Nostradamus says, said that this will happen within two decades. And if we don't do nothing, that's the science had predicted that if the, the super volcano in Yellowstone erupts, it will be the end of the United States mm -hmm. and another global extinction of species, including the Homo sapiens. So we must do something. I, I've been trying to do this Ever since Jesus appeared to me, can I talk about how I he, Jesus appeared to me? Absolutely, love to hear it. Tell me about that. Really, because yeah. I will offend a lot of people. I don't think so. I but, think it'll give a lot of people courage and give a lot of people faith. I think they'd love to hear your story. Tell me how Jesus okay. appeared to you. Aside from the Bible opening by itself, with the words of Jesus floating out and the sensation I got was hearing him instead of reading his words. I, he appeared to me 
uh, you see the September 11 event Raz the curiosity of my husband and me about Islam. We didn't know anything about Islam. So one time my husband brought home two books, one about Islam and then another book, the, the English translation of the Quran. And I told my husband, don't return them until I've read them too. And so I realized, I found out that Islam is worshiping the God who told Abraham to kill his son as sacrifice, which God already told me uh, when uh, and they're reading the letter of Jesus to the church in Pergamos, that this is a God who was created by the collective unconscious of the people of Balaam who believed in sacrificing humans to please their God. And that was the God that manifested to Abraham, trying to turn Abraham's religion into a human sacrificing religion as well. But God had a different plan for Abraham and God sent the angel to stop him. And but Islam is keeping this God who is requiring human sacrifice at the Kaaba. You know, what's the Kaaba? The stone where they believe Abraham almost slaughtered his son. And there is a, they call it the Hajj. Every Muslim bow to do the Hajj at least once in their lifetime. And that is going to Mecca and worshiping the Kaaba. And uh, so when I was reading the Quran, I came by the violent words of Muhammad. Smite the neck of infidels, take them for ransom. Hooks awaits them, show no mercy to your enemies. I was stunned. I thought the Quran was the Arab translation of the Bible. I didn't realize the Quran is completely different. And how can I said, how can he is it? If the God of Muhammad is the same as the God of Jesus, how come he has saying, that, show no mercy to your enemies? If there are complete contradictions to the words of Jesus. Jesus said, forgive, turn your other cheek, give your coat if somebody takes your, your jacket. But, and Jesus said, love your enemy. Suddenly, Jesus was beside me. And he said, Beware of the false prophet dressed in sheep's clothing, but he's a ravenous wolf. You know, I, I, and I experienced, and uh, I, I don't know, I, I, I traveled through time. Suddenly, I was in, I, it looked like maybe a beach in the Sea of Galilee, because I saw sand and and the blue sky and rocks and Jesus was there. And, and I was terrified because, because I, if, if I open this, I know how, what the, the, the terrorists would do to me if I opened my mouth about that experience. And I told Jesus, I can't do this. But Jesus said, you are the chosen one to do this. You're the only one who can do this. And if you don't do it, they will say, I told a lie. And I saw him dejected. And so that's right. I can't say no to Jesus. And then suddenly I was back in the 21st century. And that's when I started trying to disseminate this, the message that, that was given to me. I tried at the start, I tried blogging, but then, oh, I was typing, I don't know, blogging like that. And suddenly, I was starting to type words not coming from my mouth. Mm -hmm. It's like automatic writing. And so I was typing words, and it says that the only way that peace on earth would come is if all organized religion, something like that. I can't remember the exact words. And the, oh, the 
the all organized religions will do uh, as a, a peace offering and told me that the, the Catholics and the, I was typing it, Catholics and the Hindus should sacrifice their images, the images of their gods. And then I remember the, uh, the, the Jews will sacrifice the God who sent them to kill everything that breathes in the land of your inheritance. They committed genocide. They wiped out six tribes. God told me that he will never contradict his law that he gave to Moses, do not kill. And and then and then it says that the the the, the Buddhists the, the Buddhists shall sacrifice their uh, uh, the worship rituals that are like uh, what do you call that? The, the I, followers. I uh, yeah, right, yeah. They have uh, superstitious worship rituals, so mm -hmm. that that's what they are going. The the God is asking them to sacrifice that, and mm -hmm. then what they ask from Islam is to sacrifice their prophet Muhammad mm. and the Quran. And to the Christians, I was typing, must sacrifice their God, Jesus. Jesus said, do not worship me, worship God in heaven. And I posted this in, in, the, in my blog and then suddenly, Blog.com isolated my blogs because I think they did what I was writing politically incorrect. Mm. So I stopped blogging because then my blog cannot carry out my the, the my the aim to disseminate the message that God gave me. Right. And that's when I started writing books. Mm. I'm not I'm not a writer. I'm an architect. Mm. I was trained to express my thoughts and ideas graphically, not literally, but somehow managed to, to and then I have to self-publish it. Yeah, I don't have an agent. I don't, I don't know anything about writing. And then I saw an ad on the, on the television about the publishing, if you want to self-publish a book. So I did that. Oh my God, spent a lot of money on that. Mm. I, I have done this for four times already. And I, I have drained all my retirement savings. Oh, another another uh, sign from God that uh, the Jesus made me aware is that I my life is full of the repeated pattern of the, the second, the number two. Suddenly, it all just surged in my mind. I'm the second child. I'm the second daughter. I was born on the second hour of the second day of the second month while the Second World War was raging. My mother was born when all of Christendom was uh, celebrating the birth of Jesus, December 25, 1922. And my year of birth was 22 years later, 1944. Now, even the country of my birth was named after King Philip II, of Spain. That's that's why when the September 11 happened, numerologists saw the repeated pattern of number 11. Nobody saw the significance of the number 11. But when my office mate emailed this information to me, I had goosebumps because right away I saw 11 is two number ones. One plus one equals two. The numerologists didn't do the final step of numerology of adding one plus one equals two. So it is really the sign of the second coming of Jesus. And then there were two towers that got demolished, two sites of destructions, the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. The president was George Bush the second, and even the closest ally, the, the reigning more, and even the calendar 
of the terrorists at that time was the year 16, or no, 14, 1422, clearly bearing the pattern of two. And that was when Jesus appeared to me. You see, the second coming of Jesus. So a lot was foretold to you through this numerology. A lot was foretold to you through this numbers. And then around 2001, right after 9-11 or during 9-11, that's when Jesus appeared to you? Yeah, that was when Jesus appeared to me. No. But see, sure. the, my, my sign of Jonah F, uh, ordeal happened in, nine, in the last three months of 1975. And when I was telling it to somebody, uh, a visitor from Canada, she told me, you know, add one plus nine plus seven plus five equals 22. Exactly 22 years later, 1997, my husband, my, um, I just married my husband at that time. And that was our, our uh, honeymoon, decided that we go to Merida to visit the Mayan temples. And while I was there on the foot of the Mayan temple, I was looking up on, and I, my mind was filled up with the images of how the Mayan priest uh, brutally rips the chest of a human sacrifice, grab his heart and offer it to his God while it's still beating. My thoughts was in, suddenly interrupted with biblical images, completely unexpected. And that was when God showed me the image of Abraham almost about to plunge his knife to his son's chest. And this image was immediately followed by the God of the children of Israel who told him to smite them, oh no, to kill everything that breathes in the land of your inheritance. And then followed by images of my own, my own sign of Jonah ordeal with the telepathic message that they were all the works of Satan. Amazing. And that's what that's what led me. You see, I was just married. I didn't want to destroy my relationship with my new husband. I I I couldn't and then at that time I didn't know the terminology to express what I was experiencing. So but I said I told him when we were on the on the bus, the tour bus, what would you say if a truth some truths were were revealed to me today. And, and it's got something to do with beliefs, collective beliefs. And he was the one who suggested to me, Dr. Carl Gustav Jung has this theory of the collective unconscious. And I started, I started researching Dr. Jung. And that's when I, I, I became aware of the theory, his theory of the collective unconscious. Unfortunately, he became the uh, psychoanalyst of the Third Reich, uh, of course. It was a Nazi, so they they don't want to listen to what he's saying. But with my experience and with what God told me, I understand fully Dr. Jung's theory of the collective unconscious. In fact, when I was having my sign of Jonah ordeal, I saw image of some sort of energy radiating from everybody's mind, brain and then collectively gathering together. At that time, it was a complete puzzle to me. What was that? What was that image about? And when I was researching, reading about Dr. Jung's work, that's when that image came back. Our thoughts does not stay in our brain. It's it's not limited within the confines of our skull. It's radiated like radio waves, and they gather together. And uh, the the same uh, thoughts that are evil, superstitious, false beliefs become the negative dynamic archetype and the benevolent thoughts, the good thoughts, kind thoughts become the positive dynamic archetype. What manifested to me in 1975 was the negative dynamic archetype. And I was, I was tortured at that time too. The minds of men were captured by the theme of evil possession 
with the popularity of the movie, the exorcist movies. See, mm. collective thoughts create uh, exactly like what that doc, what Dr. Jung said that uh, archetypes with godlike powers can emanate from the collective unconscious and can manifest and interfere with our lives. And that's exactly what I experienced. Amazing. If I did not experience it. it it's yes. an amazing story, and you do a great job telling it in your book. The name of the book is called The Second Coming of Jesus. Kira, thank you so much thank for joining us here today book. on Spotlight. Your book is available on Amazon for download. You can order a copy. And uh, good luck to you in getting your word out. And I know that is your mission. So thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And to the viewers at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.